Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. Amen. So today uh, we celebrate, uh, or commemor- it's the commemoration of the four holy crowned martyrs. And this feast is so named after four uh, martyrs um, who were killed in the early Roman times, uh, but they're venerated on, on a different day. The ve- martyrs venerated today are five martyrs who are venerated under the title of the four holy crowned martyrs because they were buried in the same church. Okay, I'll explain. I did this on purpose. So you have, you have in the church, um, we are just exiting, or I hope we're exiting, a period of disbelief in the lives of the saints. Uh, A period after the French Revolution, after the Enlightenment, so-called, the Protestant Revolution. The church hasn't yet recovered from these things. And as I I say this frequently in my sermons more and more, uh, I'm just finding that there is a disbelief and a reluctance on the part of the church to present the lives and the legends of the martyrs that the church believed for over a thousand years. Uh, the, the stories I'm about to tell you, the church had no problem with these stories for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. It was only until recent times when doubt began to be cast upon their lives, their stories, their legends, and, and then eventually their feasts are removed from the calendar and so on. And you, you know what we see these days when somebody who disagrees with the world and, and Satan's advancing agenda, they get canceled. And it's, it's bad when you get canceled by the enemy. It's worse when you get canceled by a friend. And so what I'm seeing is the lives of the saints and their legends have been canceled for the, like the, have been getting canceled for the past hundred or so years. And, and we need to get away from that. So I will tell you the story of these two groups of martyrs and how they're venerated under the, the title of four holy crown martyrs. So early in the Roman times, uh, there were four martyrs and um, uh, for centuries, their names were unknown. What happened is uh, they, they, were, um, uh, they were martyred uh, and the Pope, Pope Melchiades at the time, uh, um, venerated them, had them placed in a church, built a church called, the, called uh, uh, the, the, um, named after them, uh, but then it was, uh, their records were lost. This is at a time when in the early church, um, you know, p- popes are being sent into exile, they're being sent to the Sardinian mines, uh, the church has to go underground. There was a period of time where it was, I think, one year or three years where there wasn't a pope. Three years, no pope due to the excessive persecution. Uh, the, the records, like I said, either they're not being kept or they were, they were kept and they were destroyed. So it's no surprise that the names of these four holy martyrs were uh, lost. Uh, so uh, th- this church is here. People know that there were four martyrs here. They're venerating them. Uh, well, what happened was uh, after that church had been established and they were known as the, the four holy martyrs, uh, a group of five martyrs w- were discovered. And it wasn't too long afterwards. Um, they had been martyred around the same time. And these five martyrs were stone cutters. And they were, they were um, making images of the gods and so on. And they were uh, commissioned by the emperor, um, I think it was Diocletian, uh, to uh, uh, make him a statue to one of the gods. Well, they had converted and they refused. And so they were put into uh, leaden coffins and drowned in the ocean. And uh, the, so these martyrs had been buried there. Their relics are translated to this, this church of four unknown martyrs. And so these five men, uh, their names were put there in the church. And so over time, you go to the church of the four holy martyrs, you see these, these five martyrs venerated, you have their names, they become known as the four holy crowned martyrs. So that's how they got that title, and they are venerated today. Uh, the original four martyrs, whose names were unknown, their feast day is August 8th, I believe. Uh, now their names and their story has come down to us by Jacob uh, Jacobus de Voragine. Uh, he was the writer of what's called the Golden Legend, and it is viewed as kind of like the first medieval, uh, by the modern church, they view it as the first medieval book of fairy tales. Uh, they don't believe it because it's full of miracles, full of stories, full of incredible, uh, uh, you know, visions of the saints and so on. Um, and many of them are true, 
Uh, but uh, the, the modern church views it as, well, there's too much that's unreliable, too much that's too fantastic. So we'll just, dis, we'll just di- discount it and dismiss it as fairy tales. Very unfair. Uh, and one of the things uh, Jacobus uh, claims in that book is that uh, the names of that group of four martyrs, the four holy crown martyrs, whom we didn't know who they were, he says that um, their, uh, let's see, what does he say? Their names were learned through the Lord's revelation after many years had passed. Uh, and, and their story is that they were soldiers, soldiers who were ordered to sacrifice to the gods. They refused, and then they were whipped to death uh, with scourges. Uh, so that was, that was the original uh, um, story of these four holy crowned martyrs. Um, and they were given a list of assigned names. Um, and whether these names were, were actual or, or it seems like they were borrowed from another list of, 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 of martyrs' names, um, okay, that's fine. What we have, though, is the church looking back and, and saying this story was invented. Uh, Jacobus says the, their names and their story was learned through the Lord's revelation. Uh, that's what he says. Are we to presume that he is a liar? Are we to presume that he is inventing this story? Are we to presume, uh, and I would say, are we to come to conclude ra- this rash judgment against his character and against the character of the medievals? Uh, I would say no. We'll take it, it. We'll take it for what it says. How do we know the names of these four holy crowned martyrs? Uh, we know them from Jacob, Jacobus de Veragine. They were learned by the Lord after many years had passed. What does that mean? We don't know, but that's what is said, that's what's written, and that can be venerated. Uh, the, the, the attitude of the modern church, and this was starting around the time of the, um, I think it was the Bollandists. They did a tremendous amount of work. They were, um, I think they were Jesuits in the uh, 1700s, even starting as early as the 1600s, 16, 17, 1800s. They did a lot of work on these legends, and they discovered some were fabrications. Uh, they had evidence for that, you know, the disproof. But in many other cases, uh, there just was no evidence for or against. It was a claim that this was learned from the Lord, what does that mean? Where's the evidence against it? There isn't any. There is no evidence against the fact that, that this may have been learned by a vision or revelation from the Lord. Where's your evidence? They can't produce it. So why should we disbelieve it? Why should we presume that they, that they had a, um, they just invented it out of thin air? I think it was one of the, um, one of the hagiographers uh, said that this story of, of the four soldiers I just mentioned, that, that they were soldiers and scourged to death, he calls it an invention and the disgrace of hagiography. Well, I would like to see proof of that. I would like to see proof that it's an invention rather than your assertion that the medievals weren't telling the truth or they were inventing these stories. Uh, you know, in fact, what we do have is occasionally uh, uh, they do claim that this was invented. Like it was at the, um, uh, uh, who's his name? Um, uh, Gabriel Pacenti, uh, uh, St. Gabriel of Our Lady of Sorrows. His hagiographer admits, I did fabricate some things in that story. Uh, I think it's the famous one of him shooting the lizard. The, the writer admits that really is not, that, okay, maybe that didn't happen, right? So even in, when you have the lives of the saints, when there is exaggeration, they'll tell you. They'll come out and tell you. When it's unknown, they'll tell you. We don't know this. Uh, when it's certain, they'll tell you it's certain. So I'm just, I'm just seeing, you know, more and more uh, so much disbelief on the legends and lives of the saints that I think it's time for, um, there's going to be, a, 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 there's, in the future, if, if the world survives and we don't kill ourselves and, and the whole planet with us, if, if, in the future, if the church survives, you are going to see a return to the Latin Mass and a return to the piety of, of, of previous ages, a return to where our first um, uh, uh, attitude is not one of suspicion and doubt and, and um, 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 what would you call it, um, where you accuse, where you look down, where you, you condemn the, the, the Catholics of the past for believing in these legends, uh, that's going to go away. And you're going to see a greater piety and a greater veneration for not just these saints, their stories and their legends, but also uh, the medieval church, those Catholics who believed in it and who gave us the world we have today. We're going to see a return to that. If we survive, that's what it's going to be. So, um, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's um, really not much more to the legends than that, to, to, to give us again. Who do we venerate today? We venerate five stone cutters. They refused to make an idol. They converted. They, w- they were uh, drowned for the faith. Uh, we also have four soldiers who were martyred. They were scourged to death for not uh, uh, um, uh, uh, worshiping false gods. 
Uh, that group of four martyrs, their names were unknown until the 12th century, uh, but they, the church was built in their honor, and that's how we, we venerated them as the four holy crowned martyrs. The group of five we venerate today, they were placed in that church and are known under that title as well. Uh, so that's what, um, that's what we know, that's what we have, and I think that's a story very much worth telling and very much worth noting. Uh, these are the, the saints, members of our family. Um, you know, who are we to pass judgment upon them? Are not they rather in a position to judge us? As St. Paul says uh, uh, to the Corinthians, you are judges of angels and men. Angels and men, those fallen angels, those d demons of, of disbelief, a demon of, of doubt, right? A demon of a lack of faith. So, um, you know, don't ever disbelieve a legend or, or life of a saint just because you're, oh, that's unreliable. Find out why. What's the evidence that it's unreliable? Uh, if it's just we don't have evidence, well, yes, we do. We have the testimony of centuries of, of Catholics who venerated that saint. That's our evidence that it is true. Pro prove to me, give me something to believe to the contrary, and then I'll disbelieve it. But we need to have that attitude, first of all, of faith first, belief first in what Holy Mother Church has taught us, and then in the presence of other evidence to the contrary, then we'll admit, okay, then error crept in and so on. And it's true, there are errors that have crept in, there, are, there were false stories, but we have evidence uh, to prove it. So let that be our attitude, and let that be our prayer, and that, let that be an augmentation to our faith and not a hindrance. Let us pray for that faith uh, every day. Uh, the four holy crowned martyrs uh, and the five other martyrs, uh, pray for us, and may God bless you all. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Fide is a tech company ran by Catholics that offers alternatives to big tech without the moral compromise. 